Hello and welcome. You're watching to The Point. G.K. Vasan's break with Congress has led some commentators to say rebellion is building up against the central leadership. And if you look at the state of Congress in Haryana, Maharashtra and Assam, you could find similar echoes there. So tonight we ask, how serious is the crisis afflicting Congress? Is it a response to Rahul Gandhi's failure to lead? And can the Gandhis keep the party together as it possibly faces more defeat in further state elections coming up ahead? That's the debate in part two. But first, the Lieutenant Governor of Delhi has recommended dissolution and the National Cabinet has accepted his advice. So elections can be held anytime between now and the next six months. But as the capital gets ready, two key questions remain. When precisely will the elections happen? And what does that date mean for the different parties? And which party looks poised to win? That's the debate in part one. And now joining me to discuss the emerging political scenario as Delhi gets ready for another election are the Vidhan Sabha leader of the Congress party, Haroon Yusuf, BJP leader Sudhan Shu Mittal, Ahmadmi party leader Ashish Khethan, and the executive editor of Headlines today, Javed Ansari. Mr. Yusuf, it's now clear that elections are going to be held in Delhi sometime between now and the next six months. My first question is, when do you think they should be held? Do you believe they need to be held in December so the results can be announced alongside the results of Jammu and Kashmir and Jharkhand? Or would you accept that because the polls are only up to date for the three constituencies where bipoles were planned, not for the others, maybe we need to hold the election sometime in February, March so that the voters list can be brought up to date? We had been consistently demanding the elections uh, to the Delhi Assembly and we had been demanding this but the BJP for the last five months were delay delaying and uh, they were trying to form a government and there was utter confusion as far as the BJP uh, Ahmadmi party is concerned they were also a confused lot but what because, about but, uh, but they had approached the I, I take the point you're they making about confusion, but I'm asking when you think the polls should be held in December or do you think a delay of two, three months so the, the voters list can decide. be brought up to date is important? Which is the date you prefer? Whenever the election commission decides, Congress is ready to fight the elections. In other words, you're happy to wait two, three months so the voters list can be brought up to date? At the earliest, the election should take place. All right. Earliest possible is what your answer is. Ashish Khatan, there is a view beyond the concern I've expressed about the voters list that December is a bad month, A, because of school exams, end of year exams happen often in December, B, because in fact it also clashes with the holiday season. Do you think that's a reason for avoiding December or would you say because last year voting happened on the 4th of December, there should be no problem having voting again in December? That's also true, November, December or January. Our biggest concern is that Delhi is without an elected and responsible government for the past eight months. And the, Delhi, the state of Delhi is going the UP way. There is corruption, lawlessness, communal tension simmering in various parts of Delhi, unemployment and there are so many other problems, power tariffs, scarcity of water and so on. The people of Delhi deserve an elected and accountable government as soon as possible. But as far as the Ahmadi party goes, we have been ready for elections since the time we quit in but February last uh, can, can year. I, can I interrupt? You're saying something that's yes. slightly different yes, to what your party leaders have been saying. You're saying the Aam Aadmi Party no, wants elections as soon as possible. But your party leaders are demanding it yes. happen in November so that the counting can happen alongside Jammu and Kashmir and Jharkhand in December. You're not which insisting is, on that. Which is, which, is, which is as soon as possible because there is a minimum statutory requirement of 30 or 35 days of notification. All right. So when I say this, I am taking into consideration the requirements of the election commission and other statutory and legislative requirements. Sudhanshu so Mittal, explain to me the BJP's position that, oh, we don't have Mr. Mittal at this moment. Hopefully, we will have him very soon. Uh, let me put it like this, Javid Ansari. What do you believe at this moment of time is of greater importance as far as democracy and governance is concerned? Delhi has been without an elected government since February. Therefore, is an early election the first imperative? Or do you think that if you're going to have elections, democratic honesty requires that the voters list be given time to be brought up to date? It's clearly not for 
all constituencies bar the three where by polls were due. And also, if you're going to have elections, don't clash with school exams, don't clash with holidays. You can just as easily do it in February or March. Which do you think is more important, immediacy or delay for the reasons I've mentioned? Look, we, Delhi has been, like Ashish was saying, Delhi has been without an elected government for eight months. If it, uh, it can do without an elected government for ten months. But certainly the, role, the electoral rules need to be brought up to date. It's another question, why was the, what was the election commission waiting for? After the Lok Sabha elections, they ought to have revised the list. So why didn't they do it earlier? But having said that, we, they can wait another two months. But, and uh, whether it's held in December or in November, they have, you know, heavens won't fall if it's held a month later. So the debate that's going on between party leaders, and I know that their spokesmen today in our studios are taking a very different, much more conciliatory line, but the debate that's going on in terms of sound bites is actually an irrelevant debate. These, these are reasons they are putting out, but the fact is that they want elections to be held with Delhi, with, uh, with Jammu and Kashmir and Jharkhand, so that BJP does not get that advantage, that, that extra advantage, were BJP to win Jharkhand and possibly form a government uh, or, or, or align with one of the parties in Jammu and Kashmir, that they believe will give them extra confidence, that much, that bit, extra X factor, which they do not want. That's why they want to want it to be held alongside rather than later. Let me put that to you, Mr. Yusuf. Is that, in fact, the real concern? I know that Javed has a knack for being able to pinpoint the real political thing, even if you want to hide it and disguise it behind clever answers. But is that the concern, that you want elections at the same time as Jammu and Jharkhand because you want to ensure the BJP gets no extra momentum by winning Jharkhand and perhaps ending up first in Jammu and Kashmir? You see, we are concerned about the people of Delhi because the people of Delhi has given uh, Congress 15 years and three times they have elected us. As far as the Aam Aadmi Party is concerned, Mr. Ketan was saying the people will suffer. I would like to ask him why the people are suffering because you ran away. You left the government, we supported you unconditionally and our support was for five years. And every time you come out with slogans, uh, earlier you said that Jan Lokpal and Swaraj bill we want to bring. What has happened to that Swaraj and Jan Lokpal over the last eight months? And the BJP is uh, talking of election now. If you go through the statements of BJP leaders, in the last five, six months, they had been giving confusing signals. Sometimes they were saying that we are uh, ready to form the government if we are invited by the Honorable Lieutenant Governor. And now uh, they are all going, uh, now the, their okay. stand has changed. People of Delhi have suffered except, because except, except of Aam Aadmi Party and Bharti Janta Party. You've deflected the issue from the question I asked very deftly. That obviously is proof that you're a very astute politician. I grant you that, but I wish you'd answered my question instead. Let me try you at this it's moment, Ashish right. Kathan, and put this to you. Your party also, despite the fact you claim through Arvind Kejriwal that you've been consistent, has done a lot of flip-flopping over when elections should happen. You wanted immediate elections in February, they weren't granted to you. Come May, when you thought in fact you needed to recover lost ground in Delhi, you sent the governor a letter saying, give us a chance, don't dissolve immediately. Then when you decided it wasn't worth your while having a chance to change your mind again. So, you know, consistency <coughs> as far as wanting elections is not your strong point. If there is one party which has been completely consistent on the issue of Delhi elections or various issues of seminal public interest as far as the people of Delhi go, it is Aam Aadmi Party. We have been filing petitions, we have been uh, uh, filing petitions in the Supreme Court, we have been petitioning Raspati, we have been petitioning LG and we have been demanding another election. Karan, you, uh, Karan, you need to remind the viewers that the Congress party when it was in power at the center and later BJP when it came into power were, didn't want an election. Aam Aadmi Party always wanted an election. We wanted election as early as February when the outgoing cabinet... Yes, but cabinet you changed your mind in May. In but Mr. That's Khatan, one. you changed That's your one. mind in May. You wrote That's a letter one. to the governor no, to say didn't. don't dissolve, give we us didn't. a chance. You did. No, we didn't. You did. This is an old issue. This that We wrote the letter and the... And the validity of that letter was seven days. It was mentioned in that letter. But never but mind. That's an old issue. It has been ignored. All right. All you're saying board. is that for it a seven-day period, you became party. inconsistent but and did a U-turn. No but you didn't do the U-turn. All right. The, the party. A seven-day. What you're saying is very interesting. A seven-day flip-flop 
is not a real flip flop because it only lasts seven days. It is not a seven day flip flop at all. All right, I, I'll accept. It is not a seven day flip flop at all. I'll accept it with a touch of humor. Because you know, it is on Aam Aadmi Party petition that the Supreme Court castigated the central government and forced. The, and the Supreme election. Court thereafter praised the, the Lieutenant Governor as well. So let's leave the Supreme Court out of it. The Supreme Court has said many things. Mr. Kheta, let's not, let's not get into a quarrel between no you and me. Javid Ansari, uh, Mr. Kheta, Mr. Kheta, let's not make it a personal quarrel between you and me. I accept your point that a seven day flip flop is not a major flip flop, but a flip flop it still is, even if you want to minimize it. But let's leave that aside. The governor has come in for a fair amount of criticism from a lot of people, not just politicians, but many outside politics who say that the procrastination that he showed in making up his mind about whether elections are possible, whether a government is possible, when those elections should be called, has been, no, has been nothing other than an attempt to give the BJP time. And that he's played a BJP game behind the disguise of following constitutional procedure. Is that fair criticism or are people actually pinning the blame on an individual who really isn't responsible? Look, it's the system. You can't blame the lieutenant governor. The lieutenant governor or a governor of a state has, doesn't have too much of a role under the, under the framework. He has to act on the aid and advice of the home ministry, of the government of the day. And therefore, his whatever little ambit he had, he acted within that. Perhaps he could have hastened this process, perhaps elections, this decision could have been taken a few weeks earlier. But the fact is that with the new government in place, he, he had to do what the government de was directing him towards. Okay. And it's rather sad that we don't have Sudhan Shumitul and the BJP with us at this moment because actually we have somewhat... We've got Mr. Mittal at this point. Mr. Mittal, let me bring you in. We are beginning to discuss when in fact elections should be held. There is a view reported in the Times of India today that the BJP doesn't want immediate elections. Both Congress and Aam Aadmi are insisting that elections should happen at once so that the results can be declared at the same time as Jammu and Jharkhand. The BJP, the Times of India says, doesn't want elections till February. A, because you have a new unit chief in Delhi. Mr. Opadhyay needs a bit of time to find his feet. B, you have a new election team. So are you actually still prevaricating about the date, even though you've conceded the principle of elections? Currency, I'm amazed at the question itself, which has been raised by the Times of India or whatever, whichever newspaper. You see, once the assembly is dissolved, we all know under the constitutional scheme of things, it is entirely the prerogative of the election commission. And given the independence of the That's election commission, never I don't stop any political party. parties giving yes. the election commission advice. And uh, p political parties are already but declaring in public when they want the election, even though they can't impose that date. That so I'm asking you the same thing. Are you exactly making it subtly clear you don't want immediate elections, you need three, four more months? No, no. No, no. We are prepared for election any time. Any time the election commission wants to hold the elections, we are prepared. So you're happy for them to happen? We are very confident about... So you're happy for December elections so the we results are... can come out along with Jammu, Kashmir and Jharkhand? You see, any time it is up to the election commission whenever they want to hold the elections. And let me tell you one thing. I don't think the election commission takes a dictate from the Ahmadi party or the Congress or the BJP. It, it is well versed uh, with its job. It knows its job well. And according to their assessment and their convenience, they will hold the elections. All right. As far as the elections are concerned. Let's I was just listening. I was just listening to a few comments which were made about the BJP like right, you did in the case of Jammu and Kashmir so, on gentlemen, don't the don't 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 gentlemen, gentlemen, don't interrupt Demand each other on time in Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, Mr. Khaitan, don't interrupt I'll come to you in a moment's time let him finish, go ahead Mr. Mittal go ahead Mr. Mittal see, I, I have two, two very worthy colleagues from two political parties Let's look at the conduct of each of them. No, and no, then, no, oh, no, uh, forgive me, really forgive me. No, for no, 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 Mr. Mittal, you're not setting the agenda, you're not becoming the anchor. This show is not to look at the conduct of your colleagues. Okay. I know that suits you Please because wait. that's your Please way wait. of scoring points, but that's not my intention. I want to move now, gentlemen, beyond okay. this issue of when elections should be held and who is favored by early elections and who is favored by slightly later elections to the prospects of your parties, because that's perhaps the best way of judging your confidence. Mr. Yusuf, after the battering you received last year when you were reduced to just eight seats, after the battering you received this year in May when you lost all seven Lok Sabha seats and lost your deposit in four of them, how confident are you this time around? You see, we had, we had faced defeats also and we have won several elections also. 
Congress does, does believe in one thing that the people verdict is the final verdict. Uh, the people of Delhi has given us three three governments in Delhi, and uh, we have accepted when they had reduced us to eight. So in democracy, these kind of things happen. But we know that the slogans and the kind of misleading campaign which Aam Aadmi Party and Bharatiya Janata Party has used during the campaign, uh, people got carried away. Okay. And the work we have done for the last 15 years, we were unable to explain it to the people. But now for the last one year, the way people of Delhi are suffering, whether it is the old age pension, whether it is the development which has come to a standstill, whether it is the prices of vegetables or milk, all these factors are there. And people have seen us performing okay. 15 years and the, the face of Delhi we have changed. And now for the last one year there is no development except all right. slogans. I take your point. What you are hoping for is a little bit of belated gratitude for the good work you did. You didn't get that gratitude in December or in May but you are hoping third time you will be lucky. Ashish Kazan. Many people feel and concede readily that the real battle in Delhi is between your party, the Ahmadmi, and the BJP. But in May, in the 28 assembly seats you won last year in December, you suffered serious reverses in pretty close to 24. So how hopeful are you now? There is a big difference. There is a big difference between assembly elections and Lok Sabha elections. Every election is different. This time people are going to vote for a chief minister in Delhi and for a government for the state of Delhi. That was not the case in the, uh, in the Lok Sabha elections. And today, Aam Aadmi Party has a blueprint, has a manifesto, has an agenda, and a vision for the state of Delhi, which no other party has, certainly not Congress party, and certainly not BJP, which has been running away from the, from the elections. They don't even have a face for the chief ministerial candidate, because for the last two years, every election that happened in this country, BJP turned it into a presidential kind of election. So they went and into did very well as a result. Look at Maharashtra and Haryana. Look they how well they did as a result of putting Mr. Modi's there, face. But there was no, but there was no Aam Aadmi Party in Punjab or Haryana or Madhya Pradesh or any other election you with more luster. You opted out of Haryana. In you Delhi, opted you are out of Haryana. You went to Yadav was publicly upset. You opted out of Haryana because you took such a battering at the Lok Sabha level, you didn't have the guts to face up at the Vidhan Sabha level. You opted out to something That's that you otherwise true. committed to do. That's not true. We, Aam Aadmi Party is not like any other party like Samajwadi Party or NCP or Bahujan Samaj Party who go around contesting elections in every state whether or not they have organizational All presence right. or, whether they, or whether they have carried out agitational politics people's politics in that particular state. I accept we your logic. That we will Those who run away live to fight another day. And politically in the... In I accept your logic, Mr. Khaitan. Those who run away trade. live to fight and another day. And that's the reason we didn't contest in Haryana and okay. Maharashtra. Sudhanshu Mittal, we're talking about the advantage BJP has in terms of the coming uh, Vidhan Sabha elections. Let me put this to you. I concede that the middle classes, after watching Arvind Kedriwal's dharnas and after his 49 abru day abrupt resignation, may well have decided they're fed up of Aam Aadmi. But he has solid support in what are called JJ colonies and what are called so-called slums. That support you cannot break. And proof of it is that in May, even though I cited where he had done badly, his overall vote went up from 29 to 33%. It's an enormous challenge, and you know that he can be the one who could easily deny you an outright victory. Karanji, I think we are being too optimistic about uh, the prospects. And frankly, they are not reflected by the history of the uh, electoral verdict given by people. Look, let's look at the May elections, where not only did we win all the seven Lok Sabha, we won 60 assembly seats out of the 70 assembly seats which are there. As you rightly pointed out, out of the 28 at the Vidhan Sabha they hold, they lost in 24 of them. So, you know, <laughs> vote share, their vote share increased at the cost of Congress, which was completely decimated. Now, as far as uh, the so-called uh, chief minister face, the other party has, despicable is the word which people use for this face, because it's a face which reflects deceit. It's a face which reflects broken promises, it's a face 
which reflects dishonesty. And when I use these strong words, I have reasons to say so. And let me give me a minute to tell you why. I, I'm not giving you a minute. I'm giving you 20 Here seconds. Is a party. You need to be fast. 20 seconds. Okay. Here is a party which fights the Congress corruption and then allies with the Congress to form a government. Here is a party which asked for dissolution of the assembly in February and in May at the prospect of probably Congress supporting Mr. them Mittal. to prevent Mr. BJP Mittal. from coming to Mr. power. Mittal. Says, let's you know, the assembly you elect. You know, Mr. Yeah. Mittal, okay. the audience will hear your very right. strong, almost personal critique of the Aam Aadmi Party and they'll be asking themselves one question. He's speaking so vituperatively, he must be really scared of Aam Aadmi. If it's, a, if it's an opponent you don't worry about, you don't attack them in this way. You're conceding my point by the strength of your attack. No, no, and you're smiling because no, you're a good-natured no, man, but you know you've given the game away. Let me put this to you, Javed Ansari. Sorry, sir. These elections that, in Delhi... That, that cannot be the conclusion. That cannot be the conclusion for one simple reason. That people have seen through the game and... When you no, 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 we're not going further down this road. You BJP. conceded my point with a smile. No. Now don't come back with another no, 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 repeat no, no. of the thing. You no, know, no. one no, thing no, that worries no, many people. Point at all one thing, because, Mr. Because Mr. Mittal, Mr. Mittal, wait, wait a moment, Mr. Mittal. I want to go to Javed Ansari. One of the things that worries people is that this election in Delhi is going to be happening when there is a lot of communal tension in the air. We've seen it in Trilok Puri. We've seen it in Bhavana. Mercifully, today on Muharram, there were peaceful processions in both areas. But the nature of the problem is there, and there are accusations being made by Ahmadmi and, B and Congress that BJP stalwarts are fueling the tension because they believe polarizing the atmosphere would be in their interest electorally. Do you believe those charges as an independent observer are genuine, or is it just politicking by another name? Look, I, won't, I don't believe in conspiracy theories, but in this case, I won't reject it outright. Look what happened. Before the elections in Uttar Pradesh, the, the general elections, we had Muzaffar Nagar and all of Western UP was up in flames. Look what's happening now. There's Tirlokpuri happening. There's Bawana happening. So every time this appears to be a template before the, before the 11, the by-elections, two assembly seats and one Lok Sabha seat in UP, one Lok Sabha seat, there was this bogey of love jihad. So too much of it is happening to be a coincidence. You know? it, this is not something that you can ignore. Perhaps there is there is something to what the opposition is saying. Mr. Mittal, I'm deliberately not <laughs> quoting your two opponents who are on the program who would endorse in full what you've heard from Javed and Sari, but if they endorsed it, you'd say it was politics. Javed is not a politician. He's probably one of this country's most experienced political analysts. He is saying to you that it's too much of a coincidence if every time before an election is held, things happen that fuel communal tension, that polarize people. The finger points always at the BJP. How do you defend your party? Javedji, you are such a brilliant analyst. You know that we do not reap in benefits of any, any such misadventures if there are at all. For the simple reason, whenever there has been polarization, it has, we have always suffered. Let's look at 93, 96 we lost. Let's look at 2002, we lost 2004. Let us look at the by-elections. There were polarization, we lost the by-elections. So somebody who understands that this is not where the dividends will come from, do you think we'll practice it? So, I mean, <laughs> let, let, let's be You know, it's very interesting. Let's not, let's you not know, be, it's very interesting. Uh, I'm going to interrupt you. Theory. You say, look at 2002, right. we lost 2004, but you won 2002 Gujarat. You say, look at 92 Maharashtra, we lost 96 no, Delhi. Sir. But, but, you won Maharashtra 95. So, you know, your examples could yeah, be held let, against let, you. Let, let give me, me give me I'm running let out of time give me just one assurance yes. give me one assurance yes you are not doing right. it just tell me you're not doing it and I, I'll end this absolutely part absolutely not and the old paradigm has changed okay look let's not look at elections from the old prism of caste religion all right, Mr. Religion, Mr. language that's I, all changed I, I, people I'll, are I'll looking for development you're, that's you're the new an politics. honorable man i'll accept your word at face value you're not doing it to say i right. hope you're correct yes. i will add i, I, I will add on oath. i will add that your both your rivals are shaking their heads in disbelief they are firmly convinced you are doing it but i don't want to politicize it and it, go it to that level them. i just hope that you stand up to your promise and your words my thanks there to all four of my guests for joining me time for we're running out of time on this Absolutely. particular episode gentlemen
I can see that Mr. Kathan is disagreeing with the assurance given by Mr. Mittal. So is Mr. Yusuf. I can see him as well. But we've run out of time. Time for a break. But then, is the Congress heading towards rebellion? And does Rahul Gandhi have the capacity to hold his party together? Or is he the problem that's threatening its future? Join me in a moment's time to find out what four of the country's top analysts think.